grab your Ziplocs, Wargamers, because today we're taking miniature wargaming down a dimension, and today we'll be playing some Hex Encounter solo wargaming using Command Decision Games' Merrill's Marauders, Commandos in Burma 1943 to 1944. This is a simulation of, I believe it's Captain Merrill, who led his commandos in fighting the Japanese in the country of Burma. Um, rather than run you through all of the rules, I'll just point out it's not technically a hex and war gaming, excuse me, hex and counter war game. It's actually a point to point. And just to familiarize you just a little bit with it, um, this point to point, it's a solo war game. And what we're going to do is draw a card to find our objective. We're going to place these objectives down depending on the card, and then we got to try to find the three objectives and get them back to one of our bases. Uh, the map, as I said, is a point-to-point -point map, and you can see that you've got uh, cities. Uh, these are towns. The black towns are actually friendly bases, and the there, there are river spaces that allow some movement. Uh, here and here, some of these towns have air bases in them. Well, I shouldn't say they have airfields. They may become air bases later on, depending on the events of the game. And then there are these pale squares here. Aberdeen, Blackpool, Broadway, White City, and Piccadilly. Sounds familiar. Those are actually called... What do they call them? They're landing boxes. And these, these uh, marauders, these commandos for the Brits can use those to move from a base to a landing box, and there will be no oppositional forces appearing in these, which is kind of a good thing. So, as I said, to start this game off, uh, we'll go through the rest of this uh, as it comes up. Uh, the first thing you do is shuffle your objective cards. There's four of them. So there's four different games that you can play, and we're just going to pick one at random, and uh, as you can see, I'm shuffling them up to keep myself honest, and we'll go with this bad boy. So, our first mission is Operation Galahad. We are to place two real objectives and three ambushes, and those are going to go in, uh, well, we're going to roll to see where they go. We have to recover two of the real objectives and deliver eight killed in actions. We have 10 operations, which essentially amounts to 10 turns, although those will recover. They'll go down with each move we make, but they'll also recover based on what we do. Uh, from a logistic standpoint, we have 40 recruit points, and we have one leader with a stacking limit of five. So we'll put that there just to remind us. And then, to keep me honest, we'll go one, two and three real objectives. And then we'll put two ambushes in there. I think that's what it said. Yeah. Oh, nope. Two real. Three ambush. So we'll swap that around a little bit. There we go. We'll flip those over and uh, kind of shuffle them up a little bit. Actually, that's what this is for over here. So we've got our five. I don't know what they are. And we got to figure out where they go. One of the things I enjoy about this particular game is that it is so random, it's never the same game twice. Uh, what do we need? Oh, I need a second die. Because we have a handy-dandy little chart. And hey, we're going old school. I'm playing this on the bedroom floor, at least the bedroom of the place where I'm staying. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to roll for each one of these objective markers. So our first objective marker, a six tells me that it's going to go into Indaw, which is right here. And we like Indaw because it's right near our potential landing boxes. Number 12, that can't be good. Nankan is going to be right there. 11 puts it in some problem which is up here, and 
Number six is Indaw, which we've already used. Uh oh, uh oh. No peekies. Five is Katha. Where are you, Katha? All right, so these are all nice and tidy and close to each other. We already rolled 11. Can't have two in Super Bomb. We already rolled five. And number seven, Tikina, which is. Where's Tikina? Oh, that's going to be a rough one. That one's deep. So, there's our objectives. Uh, these are our enemy counters, which will come into play later. Next thing we have to do is select 40 points worth of uh, friendlies. And I'm going to pause while I do that, and then I will show you what I've selected in just a moment. All right, so here's what I decided to do with my 40 points. I've essentially built two strike forces. Uh, one that is a land force that I'm going to try to come in from that side, and then I also have a larger force that's going to try to establish a base over here in these landing boxes. Now, in this game, you can actually purchase airstrikes and air supply drops, which will come in handy later on, as you'll see. Uh, they can either allow you to move one extra space, or um, you know the airstrike will add dice to combat. The air supply will uh, either allow you to move one extra space, or it will allow you to... It gives you like a bonus in combat. We'll see what happens when that comes up. Everybody that's not used goes into the commando recruit pool, which is over here. And I may have a chance to recruit more guys to compensate for losses later on. Um, so uh, I'm going to pause the camera one more time. I'm going to set up my forces uh, in the bases where I think they're best to start off. Move all of my unused pieces over to the recruit pool. And uh, so here's air available. And then we'll get started. So with everything set up, let's go ahead and get started. The way this works, you get uh, 10 operations, and uh, each operation can be used to do a number of different things. I'm going to start over here and investigate some problem with these guys over here. Now, these are ground pounders, and they're three spaces away. The number in white, I hope you can see that on the, on the, the, the counter. Uh, the five is the firepower, one is the movement. So the first thing we do is expend an op. And then we move one space because these mortars are really slow. Then we find out what's inside the jungle box. And it turns out it is a Japanese column. Uh, the Japanese column, roll one die, divide by two, and round up any fractions. Place that number of op four units in this space. So we're going to roll a d6. We get a one. So there is just one unit. And he has a firepower of four. So the way combat works is you line these guys up. Now, these guys are all the same, so I'm not going to bother lining them up. And the next thing you do is roll four. They call it tactical superiority. It basically means initiative. And we're going to roll uh, five. Well, I should probably stipulate. I'm going to roll for the Japanese first. And they get a six. And I'm going to roll for the Marauders. And they get a six. So... We will roll again. The Japanese get a three. Meryl gets a two. And the Japanese get to shoot first. So, the way combat works, since they have a firepower of four, we're going to roll four dice against the battle results table. And a six. Now, he shoots at the toughest guy, so that eliminates the mortar. And now we get four shots with a firepower of three. So, you know, the first guys don't do much, and the second guys get a panic unit. And since there are no other units, this panic unit goes back into the pool. And we'll kind of mix him up and forget where he's at. Since we won that encounter, we gain one up. And that's it for that turn. We will expend a second op. And this time, we can actually move two spaces. So that puts us, because we lost our, our slow mortar, that puts us into our objective. Turn it over, and oh, looky here. It turns out there's an ambush in there. Good to know. So we roll a d6. This time, we're going to have two opposition forces. 
and we got a six and a two. And this time, I am actually going to line these guys up. So, tactical superiority, we get, mm, I need to stipulate, the Merrill gets a five, and the Japanese get a four. Great. Oh, that's good. Because that six is deadly. That must be some serious Japanese commandos. So the first shot gets, uh, oh, nothing. That's not good. We really needed to knock him out. Because six dice are going to roll a six. And that eliminates one of our units. Initiative goes back to me, and I get to roll three dice against the six. And I have panicked him. But he gets to roll his two banger, he gets no result, and I still have two more units. So the first unit shoots and gets a panic result, and since they don't have any unpanicked units, he goes back into there. We've won. So the... Op 4 goes back into our Op 4, and I'm going to put them here so I can slide them around a little easier. Because I really want to mix those up so that I know... Uh, so I don't know which which is which. The good news is, we won that encounter. So we get an Op back. So we still have... So we've eliminated one of our possibilities... I really hope that's not one of the two objectives we need to find. Um, and for our next operation, we are going to airlift this strike force over to White City. And the nice thing about this, so that costs an op. The nice thing about this is that I can, that the landing bases don't have any opposition forces. I'm going to spend a second op. And this time, I'm going to burn. Now, I have uh, a supply column, and I have an engineer. And by expending that supply column, I you know what? No, I take it back. I'm not going to do that. You can put a forward base in place by expending that, that column, but I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to use my recon to check this guy out. And I roll a d6, and on an even number, I can flip it over before I even go there. It's an ambush. Get out of here. I'm done. I'm going to expend another op 4. Oh, now I check for availability. Uh, on an odd result, he got caught snooping around and is eliminated. Ah, uh, so he's still available. So I expend the op, and I'm going to recon here. And I have no idea what's there. So we'll see if he gets wasted. Nope, so he's still there, which is good because he's got a firepower of two. I like that. There we go. So the other thing is I'm going to expend an op. I want to know what this is. I can expend an airstrike and do the same thing. On an odd, even result, that is an ambush. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So this might actually be the first time I ever actually win this game. Oh, you know, I checked for availability for that airstrike on an even result. He's still there. Oh, yes, yes, I might actually win this for once. Okay, so I know that this is an objective marker. As usual, so we'll go ahead and do our stacking limits. By the way... Uh, good old Captain Merrill is with this group as well. He gives a plus one on that tactical superiority. So, as usual, first thing we're going to do is uh, expend an op, and then I'm going to move my boys into there. And, oh, hey, look at that. It's an objective marker. Who could have guessed? Got to draw an event card next. And we have a Japanese patrol. Divide by two. Round up any fractions. Second verse, same as the first. Hope for a low number. Yeah, boy. Oh, but he's a big boy. Okay, so we'll do it the way we do it. Uh, we, I get to line my guys up however I want. I'm going to line up my cannon fodder first. 
And then I'm going to, oh, you know, I probably could have done that with these guys. Oh, well. Uh, and then I'm going to use, what do I want, Captain Merrill? So I need these guys to build my base. I guess I'll do my, I don't need my recon guy anymore. And then we'll go mm, something like that. So tactical superiority, we're going to roll for the Marauders first and get a three. And for the Japanese and get a four. So the Japanese get to shoot first. And they're going to roll all six dice and get, oh, no sixes. So he is panicked. And then we're going to shoot with our five dice. And we get an eliminating result. That earns us an op. And he is unpanicked. Get a hold of yourself, soldier. And we now have our first objective. So what I'm going to do on the next turn is expend an op, and you can build a forward operating base. And this is an air base because of the little airplane that's there. So all my stack is in this lovely little base, and I can count him... For, I think I count for victory purposes right now. Let's take a look. Uh, to count for victory, the objective must be transported to a friendly base. Or a forward base must be built to that. Okay, so the problem I'm facing now is that I've only got five ops to run over here. So, you, yeah, we got you. We got you. I'm halfway there. Oh, you know what else? I forgot. Um, I eliminated... How many of these boys have I eliminated so far? There was the one here. There was the one here, and there were two there. But I, So that's plus four, but I lost two units here. So I'm only at plus two. I need to get that counter up to eight. So even if I find, even if I get this back to my base, I'm going to need to do some scouting around and hope that I can kill six more Japanese units while only losing a couple myself. In my favor, I've got an air supply and I've got an airstrike, so things aren't looking too bad just yet. The next thing I'm going to do is move all of these guys. Now, because I have a mortar in here, it's going to cost me an op to move one space. And I draw a card. Morale check. If the KIA index is positive, gain two ops. Well, it is positive, so I get two more ops. Awesome. Now I'm going to spend an op. Hmm. I still have a recon. Well, I know what's in there. I'm not going to spend an op to do a recon. I'm just going to move on into Nankan and find my second objective. i got to escort him back here in order to fulfill that objective. Um... And before I can do that, I have to turn over another card. Roll one die. Uh, op four units are not affected by panic. Okay, so Banzai. Uh, same thing as before. Second verse, same as the first. Except these guys are highly motivated. So the one unit... Oh, that's actually kind of a problem. Uh, and I get a six. Oh, I get the big boy again. Uh, oh, I forgot. I expended that supply building my base. So he goes back over here. Uh, one other thing I should point out. I only spent 34 points. I've got six points left over. I can buy more dudes. So I may wind up doing that. Uh, I can get six more points worth. But we'll deal with that in a moment. First things first. Uh, we're going to line these guys up. Uh, I don't think I need my engineer anymore. Like it is so. So, uh, Merrill's Marauders get a 4 on the attack check, and they get a 4. Merrill gets a 3, and the Japanese forces get a 3. Merrill gets a 2, and the Japanese get a 3. So, number 6 gets to fire first, and he is going to shoot at these guys and get a kill result. So, he goes in here, and we're down to 1. But my... Uh, mortars can fire and get an elimination. So, bit of a wash, but I will take it. 
And because we won, we get two more ops. We're going to move the whole column back to here, back to this space. Oh, that's going to cost us an op, and we have to turn over a card. Japanese March on India. Roll one die. On a one through four, nothing happens. All right, so then I burn an op to move back to Indaw. Was that... Okay. And we have now met our first objective, Gideon. Now I just need to win some combats. Let me go ahead and stack these guys up. Oh, you know what? Mm. I think I'm going to... What do you think? Should I stop, stomp around here? Should I send these guys back to Fort Hertz? Hmm. An interesting conundrum. Do I have to... Well, let me take a look here at victory. Uh, so for time. I, do I need to get all my guys back to base, or do I just need to kill? Enough guys. This will state the mission. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Because... Mm, if I go three by three and grab a six, I'm going to be hurting. So I think what I'll do is spend... What do, we, what do we got here? I'm going to spend an op. I got one, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and buy two more troops. And I'm going to spend an op to drop them off at Inda. And I'm going to spend an op to move them to this safe spot. So that puts me down to three. But... I have a nice fat stack that I can spend an op to move over here. Now I'm just doing patrols. So I spend the op, and I've got impenetrable jungle, lose one op. Uh-oh. Ignore this card if the operating force has a sapper, which I do. There's an engineer in there. I'm good. Uh, which is good because um, I'm going to spend an op to move over here. And draw a card, and it's a Japanese raid. Pick one of your forward base units. Uh, if you have no forward base, which I do, but I didn't leave anybody there. Combat is initiated. Apparently I should have left some dudes in there. Um, well, well, I got, oh, no, 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 it's got a combat of four, so it's going to be these three against the forward base. Oh my, so Merrill gets a 5, and the Japanese get a 3, so at least I get a chance to blast this 6 uh, and I get nothing. Okay, so now I have to roll a total of 12 dice and hope I don't get a 6, uh, which I do, so my base is eliminated, which wouldn't be a big deal, except my KIA goes down to 1, and the Axis... I think I failed again, man. What a frustrating game. You know, the cards just didn't come up right. Well, the dice didn't. Well, I don't know. It's weird. I needed... Oh, let's get that out of there. I needed more counters to turn up, but I needed more weak counters. Because that loses me an op, and now I'm out of ops. Maybe I should have... You know what? I can buy one op... I got two points. I can buy one up. And that gets me a chance to march over here and to draw a card. Uh, fight for intel. Place three op four and engage in combat. If you win, keep this card. Which, <laughs> great. Okay, so, one, two, three. Uh, there's my guys. I don't know if I mixed those up very well. But, so I get a two, four, and a six. Man, that sounds super familiar. Um, so six, four, and two, they're going to attack in that order. And I'm going to go three, three, that, you know, I'm going to go engineer. No, oh, my recon guy's kind of weak. I'm going to put my recon first. That engineer kind of sucks, too. Uh, yeah, let's do that. 
Let's do that. So we are back to tactical superiority for us is six, and for them is six. For us is four, and for them is five. So they get to attack first. So the six rolls, and he eliminates my recon. Uh, then I get to roll my five, and I panic the six. Then they get to roll their four, and they, what, what, nope, they don't do anything to my engineer. Cool. Uh, then I get to roll, ooh, sorry about that, I get to roll my three, which does nothing. They roll their two, which does nothing, and I roll my three, which panics, oh, I think it eliminates that unit. I might have done that wrong over there, too. Let's go to the rules. Flip one unit over. If it receives another, it is eliminated. Oh, but I get to choose. I was attacking the four. So I do have some advantages here. And then I can... I already attacked with my three. I can attack with my engineer. And I can attack with old Merrill. Whoops. I can attack with good old Merrill. Nothing. So we move to attack superiority. Merrill rolls a three. The Japanese roll a four. They get to roll two dice and do nothing. And then I get to roll a whole bunch of dice. One, three, three, five, one. I mean, there's there's a, there's a uh, panic result, and I go up to the four. Hey, and I get one more op. So I was at zero, I go back up to one, and that's great news, because I'm going to need it. And I'm going to go one space to this space here, and see what happens. Burmese Gorillas, if the operating force has a leader, gain one op. Yay, so, so it's a bit of a wash, isn't it? I'll move back to this square. And draw another card. We're back down to zero. Disease weather. Well, one die for each unit. You know, I'm not even going to bother. Because the fact is, I'm out of ops. If I get through this, I've still lost the game. I only managed to finish with, a, well, one, two, three. With a six. Oh, I forgot to bump it up for these three. Anyway, that's a six. I still needed to kill two more dudes. And it didn't happen. So, that's Merrill's Marauders. Uh, my record with this game is now O. Oh, and four. Maybe it's 0 and 5, if you, but I don't include the first, like, test run. Not an easy game to win. It's easy to get close. I've gotten that close every time I've come to within a die roll, and I just haven't been able to get over the hump. Good old Captain Merrill. Far better leader than, uh, than, than I realize. He made it look easy. I make it look hard. What can I tell you? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to see more Hex Encounter, happy to comply. If you want to see more miniatures, happy to comply with that. And uh, until next time, God bless you.